What's going on guys, 2018 is coming to a close so it's time for some end of year videos and as always I start with the worst list because I like to leave the best list a second, get the rubbish films out of the way so we can get to the good films of the best list and the worst list, yeah, these films, pff, wow. I'm not saying these were 10 films that you should hate, these are just the 10 films I could not stand the most in 2018 but before I get into the list I've got some dishonourable mentions, films that I just need to mention in a worst list but they just didn't quite make the top 10. The first dishonourable mention is Mortal Engines. Great premise, it started off really strong with a cool action scene, but it nulls dive into mediocrity with bad characters, rubbish dialogue, and just a plot that we've seen a thousand times before. I found it to be a complete snooze fest. A Wrinkle in Time, very disappointed to put a Disney film amongst the worst of the year list, but yeah, I just could not stand watching this film. The acting was extremely bad, mainly from the kid actors, and I know the kid actors, they're not that refined yet, but they're still really bad. And it just felt like a Disney Channel film, just blown on the big screen with a bigger budget. And it was as cliche and cringy as a Disney Channel film as well. I didn't do a video for this film, but I did see and nearly fall asleep in Girl on the Spider's Web. Girl on the Dragon Tattoo, it tried to be a more nuanced, a more raw, a more complex tale. Girl in the Spider's Web was more content with being a conventional espionage thriller and a really boring one at that. Johnny English strikes again and after this film I hope he doesn't strike again. It bums me out to put this amongst the worst of the year because I'm a massive Rowan Atkinson fan, so is my dad, but we both walked out of this film going, what the hell was that? Just complete unfunny garbage. And the last dishonourable mention for me is Red Sparrow. This film is good for one thing and that's curing insomnia. If you can't get to sleep at night, put on Red Sparrow, it'll knock you right out, I promise. So with that out of the way, let's get into my top 10 worst films of 2018. Kicking off the list at number 10 is Robin Hood. Some of you might be surprised that it's this low on the list, but when it comes to my top 10 worst of the year, I try to rank them in order of which ones I would dread re-watching the most, and it turns out that out of the 10 worst films, I would not mind re-watching Robin Hood over all the other ones. I still don't want to re-watch it ever again because the film sucked and it was terrible. The modern filmmaking just did not work for a Robin Hood film at all. It was like last year's King Arthur Legend of the Sword, where it tries to be really stylish and flashy but in a modern way, but for an old time tale, and it just doesn't work. It was boring, it was cliched, I didn't like it. It's one of the worst action films of the entire year. This is a film that has been oddly absent from a lot of worst of the year lists that I've seen, but I just personally really do not like The Meg. Some people found this to be a dumb, fun, guilty pleasure film. I found it to be a complete tonal mess. There were some moments that were dumb, fun, guilty pleasure moments, but there were other moments that were really serious and grounded, or at least tried to be serious and grounded, and it just collided with itself, plus the characters were terrible, the dialogue was terrible, it was generic, it was cringy, and just like a Michael Bay Transformers film, they tried doing jokes and quips to like every other sentence, and it was just an unbearable watch, for the most part for me. For me, The Meg just completely missed the mark. Number 8 is a film that you guys in America probably haven't even heard of because it's a British film. It's called The Festival. It's done by one of the co-creators of The Inbetweeners and it has one of the stars of The Inbetweeners with Joe Thomas. So that got me kind of interested to see it because I'm a massive fan of that British Inbetweeners. But the film was just not funny whatsoever. It was just a series of crude gags, a series of raunchy gags. It was either dick jokes, sex jokes, drug jokes and just other crude stuff that just, it was just thrown together and they was hoping to get cheap laughs from immature minds who just like that kind of stuff. There was no intelligence to the comedy whatsoever. I couldn't stand it. I, just, I was so surprised that this came from the creator of the Inbetweeners and it just, it really disappointed me. Another guilty pleasure film that completely missed the mark for me, The Hurricane Heist. Just like with The Meg, The Hurricane Heist, to me at least, felt like it was taking itself too seriously. And whenever you take yourself seriously with such a dumb, stupid premise, you shoot yourself in the foot and you come across as a dumb, stupid film. And that was my response to The Hurricane Heist. Couple of dumb, funny moments in there with the hurricane at the end and the trucks flying and people getting sucked into the hurricanes and stuff. But The Hurricane Heist, it's just as stupid and it's just as bad as you think it is when hearing the title. <laughs> Number 6 is the first but not the last appearance of a horror film on this list, The Nun. This film was so boring, I mean seriously, talk about just reusing every single damn cliche in the book. This film did nothing new, it's people in a house, walking about corridors at night time, shadow goes across, jump scares, following the noisy, stupid characters, you've seen it all before. I haven't seen The Conjuring films, but I have seen The Nun and Annabelle, and it's just not giving me a lot of confidence in The Conjuring films at this point, because the spin-offs have just been really really bad don't see the nun just don't do it 
true story biopics are usually a safe bet for a pretty good film, but in the case of the 1517 to Paris, it was just a story that did not warrant a feature film adaptation because there wasn't enough story surrounding the event on the train to really justify a feature film because that happens at the very end of the film and it was well done, but the rest of it was just a live story of these guys that doesn't feed into that event whatsoever. I completely checked out the film when it started showing the guys on holiday in Venice and they're just going around the sites taking pictures with tourists and landmarks. How the hell was I supposed to find that investing to watch? It wasn't. 1517 to Paris, considering it was directed by Clint Eastwood, big letdown. Some more horror goodness now, Winchester, the house that ghosts spill, or as I like to call it, Winchester, the film that leads to nowhere. I'm not going to lie to you guys, I barely remember anything about this film. All I remember it being was really slow, it, again it didn't lead to anywhere, hence my new title for it. And again, jump scares, nothing new to it. It was just jump scare, jump scare, jump scare, jump scare, jump scare. What the hell is Jason Clarke doing here? Why is Helen Mirren here? Just stop making these stupid horror films. What's the point? Just, just stop it. This was a film that I was dreading to watch. I knew from the second I saw the trailer that this was going to be high on my worst of the year list. Happy Time Murders. Oh my god. I mean, it just baffles me that this film was number one thought of, number two written, and then number three acted, performed, filmed, edited, and released. Especially that scene in the office, you know, with the two puppets, you know. There was people filming that, and puppeteers performing that. And, uh, I, I, I don't get it. Why was this film made? It was abysmal. <laughs> Number two is a film that I don't think a lot of you guys have even seen because I've not seen any of you guys talk about it on Twitter or Letterboxd or on YouTube. It's a film called The Darkest Minds. Basically, it's a wannabe Stranger Things mixed in with a derivative young adult bullshit. That is basically what it is. It's YA dystopian drivel. You've seen it a million times before. You know, the government's doing something. There's some special people. There's one girl who's the only hope for survival or whatever it is. And then there's romance and there's other bits. There's rubbish bad guys. <sighs> yeah. No wonder none of you guys have talked about it because you saw the trailer and you're like, yeah, I'm, I'm not taking that hit. But I take the hit, so you don't have to. Alright guys, here it is, the number one film, the worst film of 2018, no film bored me and just made me want to die more than Slenderman. I wasn't super familiar with the Slenderman lore before seeing this film. All I knew about Slenderman was that it was a popular game, and I've seen a couple of my friends play the game and have the crap scared out of them, which was quite entertaining to witness. So I was thinking to myself, hmm, this could be a decent film if they do it right, of course. But obviously, this is Hollywood in 2018. Of course, they're not going to do it right. They're going to take something really popular and something with a lot of potential and just make it the most hollow, dull, grey, boring-ass film they can possibly can and inherit it with incredibly dull, lifeless characters. These actresses in this film were just so bad. Nobody gave a crap here. The directing, the acting... Everything about this film was terrible, and there were some scenes that tried to really scare with some weird CGI thing coming out a wall or something, which is actually hilarious. Me and my friend were watching it, we just burst out laughing like, what the hell is this crap? For my money, there was no film more boring or torturous in 2018 than Slender Man saw so Slender. You get the top honour. You're the worst film of the year. Congratulations. Not really. So there you have it guys. Those are my least favourite films of 2018. Sorry if I came across really bored or miserable in this video, but that's what those films will do to you. That's why I wanted to get this one out of the way first. Get the rubbish out of the way so we can get to the good stuff. So yeah, stay tuned in the next couple of days for my favourite films of 2018 video, as well as my most anticipated films of 2019 video. But in the meantime, let me know in the comments below what are your least favourite films of 2018. And if you want to see more of my stuff, click on one of these and I'll see you all in the next video.